Welcome to Talk of the District. My name is Marguerite Reinberger. As you probably know, our school district has undergone major changes and is in the process of undergoing more. And today's changes are on staffing. And I welcome, assist, I'll, I'll start left, left or right, no insult to you, superintendent. <laughs> no. <laughs> Assistant superintendent, Chris Lennox. Superintendent, Corey Lunn. Now I look down at her because this, you're new and welcome. Anderson Elementary pr Principal Melinda Lansfeld, who also happens to be in charge of two major, major initiatives coming up. And then Ryan Logger, who is the principal of Stillwater Area Public School. I'm welcome. Yes. High school. Okay, first of all, Corey and Chris, tell me why are the staffing changes necessary? Well, I think one of the messages we've had all year is that we really think it's important that we reinvent ourselves. Uh, two, two reasons. Number one, um, we have some budget constraints we're working under. Number two, the educational experiences that kids will need for their future are changing. And uh, that's been a discussion all year. So I think the message today that we have is that even in spite of our financial challenges, which we've talked a lot about, there are tremendous things happening in our school district and there are some great and exciting things we're looking forward for next year. Yeah. Yes. And I think the move toward 21st century skills, uh, Marguerite, when, when we looked at some of the programming that we want to be able to provide for our students, the board has been very clear about their commitment to our STEM programming, uh, and that's going to be K-12. That is a, an, an incredible opportunity for us. When we move in that direction, you're going to want staff behind that, supporting those efforts for kids, classroom, teachers, etc. And our partnerships uh, through that have been outstanding, too. The community has been very supportive. Uh, technology, the flipped classroom initiative, and some of the, some of the things kids and teachers are doing now. Uh, we want to make sure that we have staff in the right positions uh, at all levels, at building levels, at the district level, to support those initiatives. It's, it's critical to have that support so that they, they can be successful and the kids will achieve. Well, specifically, we're going to look into what changes have been made. I know some staff have taken on new and or additional responsibilities. Other staff will be hired to take on responsibilities. What changes have already been made? Well, you know, the silver lining to what we've been dealing with is this really challenge us to think creativity, using creativity in, in the solutions that we're trying to solve. Um, so we've looked at, number one, how to be more efficient with the resources that we have. How do we direct the resources into the most important things we do, and that's teaching and learning. And how, again, how do we be creative in, in what we're trying to do? And uh, we've been able to take uh, some of the district leadership positions and uh, not only save $350,000, primarily at the Central Services Building, but I also think direct some attention, some leadership, and some focus on some real specific things tied to our strategic plan and 21st century learning. How have you reduced it by 350000 Well, there's a long list of things uh, that we've explained a lot before. of people who want to know that. Yep. Uh, I know in Chris's department in particular, there are a number of support positions that were cut that, that helped people in his department. Uh, we reorganized positions. Um, one thing that affected Chris directly is his assistant superintendent position to teach and learning was changed to an executive director position. Okay, and besides the change title, well, the change in title is also a lesser role, That's lesser position. Lesser money or, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, yep, all those not, things. Yeah, this, so, is, this is pieces some of us are yep, missing out so, here. So, okay. uh, you know, again, we have a, a lengthy list. I think last we looked, when you look at the organizational chart in the central office, uh, over half those positions are affected next year by a change one way or the other. Again, that's either a reduction or a restructuring okay. or a change of job responsibilities. And all those things together, whether it's from a custodian to secretary to an assistant superintendent, has resulted in a $350,000 reduction. Now with that, I think we've made some, uh, um, again, we've made some changes that will focus some things we're trying to do. The assistant superintendent position oversaw pre-K-12. Uh, that's a, a lot of focus. Uh, next year, we're going to have a pre-K sixth grade focus, so it's primary elementary and a 7-12 focus, which is secondary. So when those two people get up in the morning, that's their attention. They're in the buildings. That's where they live. Now, at the principal level, uh, we made reductions there as well. We had a, a couple principal positions. A full-time principal is a 1.0, mm -hmm. full-time equivalent, FTE. 
uh, we reduced uh, two of them to 0.8. So it's a, a part-time position. And we filled that with some other district level responsibilities that were reduced or changed at the district office. So in the case of Melinda, who is currently at Lily Lake, uh, she's going to be a 0.8 principal at Anderson Elementary and 0.2 of some of the district level responsibilities that was part of the restructuring. And I'll just ask about Melinda while she's sitting here. Why wasn't Melinda, why didn't she stay at Little Lake? What well, you know, I think Chris kind of alluded to okay. one of the things we really try to do to put the best people in the best positions. And to Melinda's credit, Melinda, we have uh, many good principles, very good principles. And when we thought about what we needed done, it was over CK6 STEM. It was and to STEM explain because uh, this is lingo that you guys keep hearing engineering about engineering and math uh, to to lead our district 21st century uh, learning initiative and look at some other elementary school choices. So those are the things she's going to be doing in that other part time job. Uh, Melinda was a person that we really felt had those skills to do that, and so that's why that change was made. And Corey, what does she give up when she gives up the point two? Well, you know, an argument could be made that all our principals are full-time positions. Yeah, I'm surprised um, at this. The reason why Anderson Elementary is one of our smaller size elementary buildings, so if we were forced to do it, it would make more sense to do it in a smaller building versus a larger building. You have to remember, Marine and Withrow are our smallest, but they already share a principal. So it's more of a matter of if we had to do it, and we had to because of the budget reductions that we have to make. That seemed to be the best place to do it. Christy, would you like to add anything else? I, these two think they're here just for the ratings. No, no, no. They're <laughs> no, going to get No, their, their role and, and the extra duties, I think, they're picking up are, are critical to the success and, and are absolutely, as Corey mentioned, focused on the strategic plan. So great opportunity for them to, to provide leadership for our district. And please tell our viewers about yourselves. I'll start with Melinda okay. and um, the skills that you're going to help our students with. Okay, um, I'm Melinda Lansfeld and I'm currently the principal at Lily Lake Elementary and transitioning. How long have you been there? Five years okay. and previously um, I worked in Utah and um, I'm going to be transitioning over to Anderson and doing some curriculum work there with our STEM, again it's science, technology, engineering and math, 21st century learning. We need to build a framework and it's going to take some time to do that uh, with some solid uh, core curriculum, state standards, um, strong instruction with rigor, and then we're going to build out from there with higher level thinking skills. We're going to add uh, elementary as engineering uh, kits to uh, our K through two um, classrooms, and next year we're starting robotics in third through sixth. Um, so just a lot of exciting. I can tell you're happening. excited. <laughs> about I am this. excited. This is good. This yes. is good. I can yeah. see why yeah. we selected. Right, so. and I heard your name was a you know, natural selection. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. why? What do you um, have? I do have a master's in curriculum and instruction, okay. and then I've taught a variety of um, grades. Uh, I've taught kindergarten, second, third, fourth. I have my early childhood um, license as well as my gifted endorsement from and Utah. And Anderson only won't be privy to your expertise. All the I'm schools will be. Yes, okay. Because I have to remind, remind you know mm -hmm. viewers that this point too is district wide. Mm -hmm. It's not just Anderson. Well, and the other good thing is, you know, one of the first plans was to share a principal again between two buildings. For example, Anderson and Afton Lakeland, which means the principal will be going back and forth. <coughs> Parents concerned about that as I would. This scenario is much better. She we want her to stay in that building as much as she possibly can. If she's doing district level things, we want her to do it there as much as she can. So I think that was a good scenario for our families, our students, and the school district. And I do want to say I want to build strong relationships with the school. The school will be mm -hmm. a priority for me. Um, but it I should am, be. And it should be. Right. Um, but I, I am excited about the curriculum work also. Is there a shared principle between Withrow and Marine? Yes. Mm -hmm. And has been for uh, as long, long as far as I can long remember. Long time. Is that right? yep. They have about 120, 30 kids per building, one section. Um, so yeah, it's been a long, long time that that sharing has taken place. Okay, tell me what you're going to bring to the table. Aside from your already um, principal skills, which you know, I must say I've been spoken highly of from the students, no less. Well, well that's good to hear. Um, you know, I've been at the high school for four years. I've had an opportunity really to um, experience the district at multiple levels. Um, over that time, I've been uh, had the opportunity and privilege to do um, a lot of work at the district level as well as at the building level. 
so I think that's been a, an advantage to me. But you know, Melinda talked a lot about STEM programming, and I think the idea of 21st century skills in STEM are something that are out there as terms, and people are really having a hard time trying to define what those are and what does that look like. And you know, the, we're in an interesting time in education. It's one of the first times where uh, we really are, f are in a position that we need to change what we're providing kids. And, as we look at the world around us, it's changing rapidly. Uh, the way our kids communicate, the way our kids socialize, the, the world that our kids will live in is going to be far different uh, than the world we lived in as much as we've seen a change. So, you know, I look forward at the high school level. We're really focusing on how do we build 21st century skills? And we look at that as how do we provide more self-directed learning options for kids? Um, they have unlimited access to knowledge through technology. You know, if you, if you had a question even when I was in high school about something, you'd go to an encyclopedia or a book or ask a question. Now kids just Google it. And, and part of it is, is framing in that self-directed environment what is accurate information and how do you search for that information. So um, those kind of skills are something that can be covered in multiple curricular areas. Uh, one of the things we're really excited about next year, though, is we're going to be adding uh, the first phase of a fabrication lab to the high school, where we're going to bring industry standard equipment to our kids uh, and provide them with the training uh, and opportunities to work on things that they will work on the minute they enter the field. Um, so it's really exciting for us. Uh, you know, I talked a little bit of the partnership uh, gala. Uh, about we're going to have a 3D printer that was used, you know, seven or eight years ago there were conjoined twins born in Rochester and they used, they couldn't decide how to separate their liver. Well the very 3D printer that we're going to add, that was how they figured that out and both of those girls were able to survive was they built that liver in a 3D model. Uh, they took a picture of it with a CAT scan and they practiced their cuts and things like that. Our kids will have the opportunity to build things that they've never been able to build with these 3D printers and then work with industry standard equipment to create things. I'll ask either of you, this, yep. is, this is great when you get the detail of what's yep. going to be brought into the, to the school system. Who or what determines 21st century skills? I think it's everyone, and including the community. We need strong community support, and um, I've been so pleased with the outpouring of community members contacting me, offering their assistance. We have um, engineers, we have mathematicians, we have scientists, all within our community offering to help us, and together we need to build that framework of what that means and what it looks like. And the focus on STEM is why, Melinda? I mean, why I, that? We're in our we're in the 21st century, and we need students prepared for careers that are constantly changing. We need them um, to become lifelong learners. We need to spark their curiosity. We need to have our students engaged, um, and they need to be using higher level thinking skills. And you may have already addressed. I mean, you have mm -hmm. addressed this. Um, the other skills that that brings focusing on STEM, what else? Well, you guys I, can give you an ex I, I can give you an example. At our school, we've had a fifth, sixth grade robotics yes. team, a Lego team, and to go to those tournaments and to see what the students can do and how they've put things together, how they've collaborated, used teamwork, um, the math that they use, and just trying to problem solve, it's an incredible experience for our students. Well, those kids are fun to be around, actually. Yes, I like other things. They're all hyped mm -hmm. up, and it's like they're in their element. It's wonderful mm -hmm. to see that. And, and it's great for them. We want all of our students to experience that. You know, that's a great example. You know, at the high school, our robotics team actually just won the state championship in the mm -hmm. first state tournament ever, and uh, it's actually a really fun event to attend. Um, it's unlike anything you've ever seen, but these kids get uh, a box of supplies, and they have to create a robot. But there's a lot of thought process that has to go into that, and the interesting thing this year was they actually created a support bot. They didn't create a bot that was going to score all the points in the, in the game they were going to play. They created the robot that was going to provide support to other robots. So even the thought process of deciding what they need to create. And I think for us, the important thing to know is, you know, you've seen this nationally. I know Senator Franken has made a big push for the, um, the hands-on preparation, the two-year degrees, um, that we're going to create an environment where we're going to give kids industry standard equipment to learn and prepare on that typically they wouldn't have had the option to do until they got to post-secondary, either to a two-year technical college or a two-year college. And we're going to move that up and accelerate that and give kids in Stillwater the opportunity to experience that and learn at an earlier age and experience preparing them for that. In addition to that, um, uh, two years ago we had an opportunity to go down and visit with, uh, we looked at Mankato State, Southwest State, we looked at a couple of the Mankato schools that had Project Lead the Way. And 
uh, I think the important thing we learned was a lot of kids, uh, when they get to the four-year engineering program, get a strong theory background in engineering, and they get some practical experience as well. But there were a lot of kids who were enrolling in uh, a Metaltronics program and in some other programs at Southwest Technical College because they really wanted the hands-on engineering piece. And in the students that talked about it, they said it was a more, uh, it really brought to life the theory pieces they were learning in their engineering classes in the four-year degree with the ability to actually put the hands-on piece to it. And so I think the goal for us really is looking at how do we accelerate and make sure that we are keeping pace with what other districts are doing in preparing their kids? Because we don't want our kids to leave Stillwater, enroll in an engineering program at the University of Minnesota, and not have had the same opportunities and experiences that kids in White Bear Lake, South Wash, Montemedi, or other school districts around the metro area have had. So um, that's really our big push in, in giving that hands-on experience that they can apply with theory. One of the comments from one of our robotic students uh, this year when he was working on building the robot was he's also taking BC Calc. And, and his comment was it actually made the calculus make sense to him because mm -hmm. he was actually using product or, or using some of the math that he was doing in class mm -hmm. to develop the robot in, in things that they were working on. So that was neat. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the STEM is not necessarily, um, it, it's certainly going to help encouraging students to go on and in, in, in major in those areas. Yeah. It should help in any career. Am I right on that? And ex give Absolutely. examples of how it would help and pick some career that's not even one of those. And tell me how, that, how, how you see the world needing that skill. You know, I just had opportunity to listen to the guy who started the Geek Squad. Um, he started it with $200. In, uh, he was a student at the University of Minnesota. And uh, he sold the company to Best Buy. And at the end of his talk, they, they had uh, little clickers that all the people in the audience could vote what his um, perception would be of an answer to a question, what's the most important course you take in high school? And he kept stressing humanities. And I think that the piece why he kept stressing that was um, one piece is you really need the creative and innovative piece, which is what we've always led. Our education system has always led the world in that, and we want to continue to foster and develop that. But the piece where he talked about the importance of the humanities is that's where the creativity comes in. That's where the, the ability to communicate with people. Um, that's where the ability to sell what it is you're creating. So you have to continue to develop your mind in the areas of the arts and the humanities. And then really the, the science, the technology, the math, that concrete stuff. You have to be able to do that. But if you don't have the creative mind to do that, you're not going to create creative things. You're just going to reproduce what other people have already produced. So um, that was an interesting connection is to see the importance of of being involved in English and debate and theater and art and, and social studies. Yeah, yeah, was that you need to see that mm -hmm. side of it in order to develop it. You so. know, when, I, when you think of STEM, I think the greater context is 21st century learning. <clears throat> Many of us have young children, and I can tell you my kids learn so much differently than I did. 24-7 access, technology, the, the content is such a, a fast rate and we have to filter that. Uh, and those are the things we need to teach. So when we think of STEM, STEM is one way to teach 21st century learning because it teaches collaboration, problem solving, communication skills, those kind of things. The other reason we choose STEM is when you look at the careers of the future, there's STEM-related fields that are going to offer the most jobs and careers. So, so far. So far. Yeah, and that can change. I mean, sure. really, what they tell young kids is we don't know what the jobs of the future are going to be. But if you look at technology that's only going to be exploding, uh, using those resources, working with other people. We're going to be competing and working with people across the world. So our kids need those experiences. So in the elementary focus is all kids have these great experiences. Yes. At the secondary level, it becomes more of a choice. So if that's a career field, you can get that industry standard piece that Ryan's talking about. And just one last comment. I hope the audience really is picking up on the energy and passion here. Uh, one of the exciting things about I know, our Ryan's a little low yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the excited, exciting things about our model, not only is it more inefficient, but it puts people at the grassroots at doing these things, and that was the intriguing part. That's of, really that good. Let's get the principals involved. And I think you're seeing the knowledge and the passion and the excitement, and that's what excites me for next year, both as a parent and a superintendent. Chris, do you want to jump in? Because you've had a background. You saw STEM grow. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the, the unique things in Stillwater is that we're doing this K-12. 
Um, lots of districts will take a, a magnet school, a pilot here, a grade level, but we really saw the, the importance of making sure we provided these opportunities to all kids. And so as we, as we developed that plan and reached out to our partners, now we're just excited that we're going to be able to have the opportunity to provide this to all of our kids in, in all of our schools. And is it mandated for, you know, STEM, 21st century skills, are those concepts that are mandated no. or no? Okay. No, they're not mandated mm -hmm. uh, by the state. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe best practice, if we're going right. to prepare our kids for the future, they need these type of opportunities. Obviously embedded in some of the, the courses will be math, will be science, will be technology skills. The kids should be getting, we're trying to incorporate that, put it all together and give it to them in a hands-on, real-life, meaningful way. So we think that's really the impact and the power of the program. Well, I would guess, go ahead, Corey. I, I can always tell he's, well, he's so, excited too. I just was gonna remind the audience uh, again that the STEM initiative we're putting into place really came about through three community partners, not district money. Uh, we have the 3M Foundation that's donating the materials for what's happening at the elementary. We have the Hubbard Foundation that's matching dollars for the Fab Lab, and, and now we have Anderson Corporation Foundations doing the training for the teachers and Chris was really instrumental on that to getting those things going But that could not be possible without reaching out with those community partnerships So this is really a community initiative Funded from the community versus through the school district. How do we compare to other districts? Do you have any idea which you always have to be aware of if you're so-called competing with the global? I mean compete with your own too. Well, that was something I was going to comment on as everybody was was talking about that when I was in uh, an opportunity to go to Mankato like I said a couple of years ago and I sat in a middle school classroom where the students were in a course that's a part of a program called Project Lead the Way and they were actually working on projects with a school district from up by Fergus Falls um, through the use of Skype and other tools the, and Google Docs these kids in two different geographical locations we're working on an assignment together in a group. Um, and I think about how does that translate. We talk about 21st century, we talk about, I talked a little bit about self-directed learning and teaching kids how to access. They have unlimited access to knowledge. How do they do that? Corey's talked a little bit about collaboration. The ability to collaborate. If you just think where we were 10, 15 years ago, people obviously think the internet's been around forever and email's been around forever because we use it all the time. But really, you know, about 1997, 96, 97 is when PowerPoint came out. And we all think that's been around for 20 years. It hasn't. But if you just think about the ability to, to do research today, you can take the seven brightest minds in the world, and they don't have to get on a plane and fly to get together. They can get on various tools on the internet, and they can have a meeting, and they can talk about things, and they can problem solve, and they can work together. And what I saw there in the example when I was in Mankato was an excellent example of teaching middle school kids to interact with people in other geographical regions around complex problems and work together. And that's exactly what many of our major corporations are doing in terms of as they look at research and development and design. They're able to bring some of the brightest minds from around the world together in a very cost-effective way through the use of 21st century tools like computers and technology, various technology tools. And back to my um, question is how are we competing with the other districts? Are you guys aware of it in, in the area of 21st century? I think century? we do very well. We're a great school district, but we need to continually look towards improvement. How do you know that, yourself. Melinda? Are you out there? I mean, how do you, is it a gut feel? I mean, you know, you're, you're doing all the work inside. Mm -hmm. We doing, look at data. We look okay. at test scores. Okay. We do formative assessments. We've, I've visited personally, um, Monomedi has a very strong program, I've been to... Uh, Why East strong? Eastern. Define strong. Uh, they have a fabrication lab in place right now, they're right. doing EIE in elementary, they have been for a few years. You know, Chris referenced something too, is you know, we decided if this is good for kids, it's good for all kids. You know, right. and that was a similar philosophy they had where they started mm -hmm. with one school and they spread it out to all of their schools. Um, White Bear Lake, uh, another school district in our area, they, you know, they've developed a, a pretty strong Project Lead the Way program, Fabrication Lab. I visited a Fabrication Lab in Chanhassen. I went to Mankato. So I, I've done kind of a geographical, not only in the city here, but mm -hmm. also um, to Mankato. And the goal about, to Mankato for being someone who's at the high school level too was to look at what's happening at the post-secondary level, both in two-year and four-year, to ensure that what we put in place isn't just glitzy, it isn't just fun, it isn't just something right. where we're giving kids a really cool experience. It's that that experience is actually accelerating their learning. So when they get to these colleges and these programs, they are advanced and ahead and they are prepared. So they aren't getting there spending all of that money on post-secondary and trying to figure out things that they should have already learned in high school or that other high school kids are, are experiencing. So 
our move into STEM, the building of the fabrication lab, these things are just going to allow us to stay competitive with what a lot of the other schools are doing. Um, you know, what we bring into that and what our teachers will bring into that will enrich it and I believe move us ahead. I just want to mention too that our parents tell us. Mm -hmm. Our parents frequently tell us what the strengths are, why they've moved here, why they come mm -hmm. here, and things Very they're helpful. looking for their student. And next year, with, with the dual role, the elementary secondary person, we're going to be doing a number of surveys with our parents to find out what they value and what they really are looking for in our neighborhood schools and what we can do in response to that. Good. So I th again, I think it'll be a really exciting time for parents, community, and the school district. You know, you'll benefit by the fruits of her labor. You know, that <laughs> very, <laughs> very much, very oh, much yeah. so. <laughs> very much so. We, in the kindergarten level too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How so? Um, we will be putting engineering as elementary kids along with our science kids. Who and knows what kind of things you can do for kids mm -hmm. who come in on preset what they want to be. But we, you know, we are truly living in a global society mm -hmm. now and we need to really look at that big picture and look at everything besides instruction. We need to look at it, the delivery, the environment that they're in. It, it's a big package. Just to give you another example uh, of my own son, he, he gets on this MindWorks computer program and kids log in this virtual world and they're creating this, this world and culture. All our kids need those experiences. And that's what's great about this initiative is, as we've all alluded to, we're, we're really probably the only large school district that's done this K-12 in all our schools because that's what we believe is important for all our kids. Right, I do think that was an absolute mm -hmm. wise move. Um, we don't have many much time left at all. I want to go th to each one of you and anything that we haven't touched on that you'd like our viewers to know. Um, I guess I'll start by just saying, you know, overall, uh, and it's probably referenced, but this was, uh, our, our communities asked for this. I mean, in the surveying we did, uh, we're stepping up, we're going to provide a program, and, and I think as you see this grow and develop over time, we become stronger and stronger, and, and people will just see, uh, see it grow, develop, and there'll be some incredible things uh, happening as we move forward. So, very excited. I'll let Corey be the last one. Okay. I always like to give you the last. Yeah. I'm just um, really thrilled about all of the support from our parents, our staff, all of our teachers. The school board has been behind this um, and really made this happen for us, and it's, it's what's best for kids. I do think you have a progressive school board. Mm -hmm. Really, really do. And uh, maybe, maybe, well, actually, maybe they are reflective of the community. I was going to say maybe uh, more progressive than the community, but I do believe they are reflective. At one point, I didn't think so, but mm -hmm. things have changed. Right. You know, one of the most important things we do is constantly make sure that we are providing an experience for kids that is going to prepare them for the world that they're going to enter. Um, it, that's been, it, it challenges hard in education, or I'm sorry, changes hard in education, but we know we need to change to ensure that we give our kids an opportunity that when they have, they can do anything they want with their future. And I think that for me, that's what's the most exciting about this initiative is we are going to be accelerating the learning opportunities of kids and the experiences that they have um, that's going to open up doors of opportunity to them that probably wouldn't be open if we weren't doing this work. So, and again, I think the most important thing that people have said is this is going to be a K-12 initiative and you hit on it a little bit that we are only going to get stronger in this as kids continue to move through the system because the experiences they're going to have as early as kindergarten are going to allow us to create even more rigorous experiences for them when they get at the high school I level. think your two words say it all, accelerating and expanding. Yeah. That's what it sounds yeah. like. Go ahead, Corey. Well, I'll just end on a few comments. Uh, if you think of all the things that have changed in the last 10 years, let alone the last five years, and think of our kindergarten students what their next 10 years are going to be like. And I'm going to steal this from Ryan, but Ryan shared a quote with me that today's kindergarten students, by the time they graduate, will be entering the third decade of the 21st century. So what do we do as school leaders? You know, we can't make the easy decisions. We have to make the right decisions. And that causes controversy. Change is hard. But we're going to prepare our students for their future, not our past. And we're all very passionate about that. Never changing district out of necessity, it mm -hmm. sounds like. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us. Thank Thanks. you for joining us.